Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at Gazelle dot com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 98. This is the show that covers the latest iPhone news, apps, tips, and tricks. I'm Sarah Lane, and I'm ready to rock on all things iOS. You ready to rock? Well, are you, punk? Number one. Well, Google just bought Songza, and I read the news, and I thought, oh, cool, Google bought Songza. Wait, which one's Songza? And then I realized I don't even have it installed on my iPhone. So let's check it out now, shall we? Obviously, somebody wants it. Songs that allows people in the US and Canada to stream thousands of playlists, original ones, that are handmade by music experts. Now, the idea is that your music tastes are dictated by your mood, what you're doing while listening to the music, what kind of music you like in general, but also that there's a lot of value in music that's curated by music experts like DJs or a Rolling Stone writer, those sort of people. Now, if you search for an artist, you'll see every expert curated playlist on Songza that features them. And then any playlist that you choose will begin with a song by that artist. This is a model that you're pretty familiar with if you've played around with Pandora at all. You can save your favorite playlists and share them via Facebook or Twitter or email. I don't know how helpful that is, but hey, it's in there. Sounds pretty good. At this point, according to Google anyway, Songza will remain intact for users. Nothing's supposed to change about the service. That's for the time being. Although Songza's expertise will now be applied to other products like Google Play Music and of course Google-owned YouTube. So for people who use a lot of Google services, this seems like a really good thing. Long term, I would bet Songza gets folded into Google Play Music or some future version of Google's music app offering, whatever it may be. For now, it's still pretty solid, users love it, and Google gets a service that helps humanize its approach a little bit. Number two, I have a very sad story and I'm gonna share it with you now. Over the weekend, I lost my iPhone. This is not the iPhone that you saw last week. It's the same version, but it's totally new. So I was at a party, I lost my iPhone, I looked everywhere for it, I couldn't find it, and you know, eventually I just had to leave the party. It was very tragic. Now, of course, the first thing that I did was look it up on Find My iPhone. I used my iPad because I'm running that app and looked for my iPhone. But that didn't work because my lost iPhone had run out of batteries and was no longer trackable. Of course, that's really, really frustrating. So I got to thinking, why isn't there a feature where right before your iPhone's battery dies, it gives Find My iPhone a ping? That way you'd at least know the very last place it was seen before it died. I was so frustrated about this, actually, that I sent out a tweet expressing my frustration, as I tend to do, that my little iPhone was lost and dead. And it turns out that this will be an exact feature in iOS 8. Eventually, we'll all be able to at least toggle on the option to let our iPhones say, here I am, as they lay dying, which of course gives you that much of a better chance locating them later. Doesn't help me now, of course. My iPhone is lost somewhere in Malibu, California. I did have to buy a new iPhone and it wasn't Jeep. So that makes four different iPhone 5Ss that I've owned since last October. But don't worry, I'll never procreate. Number three, speaking of battery life, we got a duh tip from Mike, who wants us all to know what's killing ours and how to help ourselves. Mike writes, my battery started dying before the day was through and I couldn't figure out why. Then I noticed the location arrow was on at the top of the screen. But what app was using it? I went into settings, privacy, location services, and saw that Facebook had a purple arrow. So I dug around in Facebook and discovered I had two things enabled. One I turned on myself, nearby friends, and one I had no idea of under settings, location settings, location history. Once I turned that off, I had plenty of battery left to watch i5 before I fell asleep at night. Anyway, I figured others might have the same problem. Maybe it would help them too. Very true, Mike. Not only because 
you're watching i5 in bed and you know, I'm not even gonna talk about that. Not only should you always be aware of what apps you're shared location with and might be sharing with other people, but also how that might be affecting your battery because it will. Now's the time. Now's the time, everybody. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle. If you're thinking about getting the new iPad or, or a new iPhone, or maybe you just already got one and you have all these used gadgets just hanging around your house or your office or a junk drawer or whatever, don't just hold on to them. What are they doing for you? You should sell them to Gazelle because Gazelle wants to buy your used iPhone, iPad, or other smartphone. What you do is go to gazelle.com, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com, and you find your item. You tell Gazelle the condition your item's in. Maybe there's a scratch here or there. Maybe there's even a broken screen. Don't worry, they'll, they'll buy those too. Then you get a risk-free offer from Gazelle for those gadgets, plus free shipping. You'll get paid fast by check, by PayPal, or an extra 5% if you choose an Amazon gift card. So go to gazelle.com now and get an offer for that iPhone or iPad. Payment is fast within just a few days of the item being received. It's risk-free. Offers are good for 30 days, so you lock in that price, and that gives you time to transfer data or set up a new device, or if you're like me, just forget about it for a while and then realize, oh yeah, I have to do that still. I've got my Gazelle offer. 30 days though. Gazelle will also wipe your data for free. They've paid more than $100 million to over 700,000 customers. Free shipping, fast process, nothing could be better than getting money for the gadgets you're no longer using. So what's your iPhone worth? Take a minute and go to gazelle.com and find out. But do it now because your iPhone may lose value the longer you wait. Thanks so much to Gazelle for sponsoring this episode of i5. Number four. So Vine got a nice little update, which now gives all the videos in your feed loop counts, which is a view counter for all your videos. And of course the videos of the people that you're following, counting each loop that your Vine video plays both in the app and on the web. Now it's actually really genius of them and kind of fascinating to watch because of course Vine requires no refresh of a page to reload a video. It just loops on its own as long as you're hovering over that video. And often people will let a clever Vine loop a handful of times. I know I do whenever I see, you know, a Welsh Corgi doing something funny or cat related stuff. So Vine now has these loop counts that are that are increasing exponentially. The app also got a new feed design which puts a cleaner emphasis on the videos themselves. And then a redesigned activity section includes account milestones like those loop counts and your likes and your new followers, stuff like that. Vine has never been my favorite social network. I mean, as far as videos go, I still feel like I'm more of an Instagram person, but I have to give it up to the team. Ever since Twitter bought Vine, it's really only gotten better. Finally, number five. I would like to finish off today with a two for one duh tip extravaganza from Alan, because Alan, you're the best. He writes, to make weather information in your notification center go away, you have to disable location services for the weather app. Settings, privacy, location services, then weather. Alan says, sometimes it responds slowly, but it will eventually add or remove that weather information. This is great for those that find the weather channel's data not that accurate for where they live. Alan also says, Yahoo Weather uses the weather channel for weather data, in case you didn't know. Here's the second dot tip from Alan. An easy way to restart an iPhone 5S. The iPhone wants to be powered up and in standby when it's charging. Why not take advantage of this? Next time you go to charge your iPhone, power it down first. So when you plug it into an outlet, the phone will power up and the restart will be complete. He also says, if the phone has less than a 4% charge, it will charge to 4% before starting up. Well, that does it for this episode of i5. Did you have as much fun as I did? Yeah, I hope so. All the apps and links and other information that we've talked about in the last 10 minutes is all at twit.tv slash i5. You find everything there. You can email ideas and questions and feedback to us at i5 at twit.tv. Love your app suggestions and your duh tip suggestions. Honestly, you help me make a better show each week. You can leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5. You can send us a video with an app review of your own, or you can just watch us passively week after week. As long as you're enjoying it, I'm enjoying it. I'm Sarah Lane, and we'll see you next week on i5 for the iPhone. <laughs>